Hello and welcome to the last word on Spurs. We are your award-winning Tottenham Hotspur podcast and we are back for a late, late, late preview show of West Ham. Come hello for our watching audience. It feels like a very, very late, late start. Please let me apologise. I know you guys hate me saying this. It's the kids. It is the kids. You know, we're in that discussion in the green room now. Uh, for some, they've grown up, they've gone away, and you can see why there's so much happiness for some of this chat. For some, they're battling with more than one or two. There's three or fours in here. There's fives in here. Unbelievable. Listen, thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you are listening for the first time, where have you been? We're on iTunes, we're on Spotify, we're across all major audio platforms. We're, of course, on X. We are on Instagram. We are on Facebook, too. And we return with great guests on the show, one making their debut. As we look ahead to a big, big game in Spurs this season, it always is, of course, West Ham to come away, always we know this fixture is tough. I think many looking at the fixture predictor with nine games to go, we'll be looking at this one with maybe an element of concern that, you know, it's always tough down at the London Stadium. And look, who better than to preview this one with me? I'm delighted to say returning to last one on Spurs. There's always quite literally fireworks whenever he's on and always lots of laughs and jokes. It means we can have a few laughs and jokes because Spurs did get a result against Luton just the wonderful returning. Joe Wobble is back. Joe, how are you? Lovely to have you back. Well, I, I, I was there Saturday, so I was happy we got the we, we dug a victory out. It wasn't fun. Literally. Watching. Why is Christina laughing? There's no fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there was. There'll be something supernatural because we had a supernatural event. We had a firework display, didn't we, last time? I don't know. I don't know why. But um, oh, yeah, we don't know why, but John, you started it. Yeah, well. <laughs> But but the or anyway, it, shall I say? West Ham. No, don't worry, there'll be oh, don't worry, there'll be more coming up. I'm sure there will. But um, just ask me to pronounce some of our squad players' names. No, worry, we're up. coming on to we're coming on to them. Uh, they're right up. Don't worry about it. Yeah, but, they um, have, this is the chat we've got. We've got Hoybier still going on here, John. You've started off a trend with Holberg. They won't want to sell him with you on here. Well, never mind. Dragusin, I like good man, strong, <laughs> run like horse. But yeah, Dragusin was good. I thought he had a, he had, he'd done fairly well. A little bit clumsy, get a ball away a couple of times. But um, yeah, West Ham coming up, and uh, yeah, this one's always a big. In my family, it was a big rivalry. So I've got this book coming out. Let's talk a lot about Tottenham and the rivalry. So my one of my cousins is well, a few of my West Ham season ticket holders. So he sends me my book with the picture of me with a West Ham bobble hat on it, just to wind me up a couple of days ago, you know, um, which was a bit cheeky. His brothers, he got his two brothers, one's a West Ham fan, the other one's a Tottenham season ticket holder, so same as me, you know. So this, what, this was always the big one for me, more than Arsenal, you know. And, uh, and of course, they see us as lily-livered, as well as wearing lily-coloured shirts. So they always see that we're, you know, if you put enough pressure on us, we'll crumble. And, you know, let's hope tomorrow we don't crumble. But I feared the worst before the Villa game and Tottenham come up Trump. So I was convinced we'd crumble, but we didn't. Let's hope tomorrow we go there and get a result. But they're, they're not mugs and they're not, the they're not the championship side that come up years ago. You know, Kulis, Paqueta, Bowen's yeah. as good as anyone up front now. Do you know what I mean? I totally get agree, them dishes ready, Christina. I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, John, you mentioned that they have got some fairly decent attackers. And I mean, again, we know before we come on to West Ham in general that, um, I mean, the vibe is certainly around the kind of style of play and what they're maybe being subjected to in some parts. I mean, look, they had a crazy game at the weekend, which West Ham will bring into this show because, yeah, I mean, a lot of that kind of format is the kind of mood around that fan base at the moment. But back alongside me, trying to contain herself early for what's I'm sure going to be another cracking show, quite literally. We've got the wonderful Christina Zanders back. Chris, how are you? Love to see you back with us. You well? Again, it feels like I've been on, it's been a while um, since I've been on here. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this because last time, oh my God, I was literally, I felt sick afterwards because I was laughing so much. Um, but it was a cracking show. It was one of the best that I've done on Last Words. But yeah, looking forward to this one. Plenty to chat about, um, especially the game over the weekend. Um, take a lot of positives, I guess, and negatives. But, you know, tomorrow's going to be a big, big game, I think. And I'm really praying for a result because, and to be honest, I'm praying for a better performance tomorrow as well. But who knows? All to discuss, I guess, later on. <laughs> Amen, Chris. A lot of those points, I think many would agree on the fact we'd need to have better performances. And again, I think the nature of them coming up, this game is not going to be easy. And uh, Marlon, mate, lovely to have you on. A nice, easy one to bring you into on last one on Spurs. It's been a real pleasure getting to know yourself and Ash. And mate, again, thanks for your time. I'm really looking forward to your debut. How are you? You well? 
I am well. No, thank thank you so much for inviting me. You know, I'm two thirds of Spurs Kings TV. I can see Ash has been smashing it, so I've got a hard act to follow. Um, but no, nah, thanks. And it's quite ironic that you bring me on for West Ham, my local team growing up, who I grew up with a lot of oh. West Ham fans. So I'm just kind of like okay. this. I had always Spurs were always in my heart. I was always going to support Spurs. So this is it. Yeah. This is the one. So, but yeah, thanks again, Ricky. Yeah, I mean, many of us have a choice in the proceedings. I didn't get a choice. <laughs> just, to, just to know if I got a choice, I might not be doing this. I mean, I'll be, <laughs> I mean, would any of us be doing this if we did have a choice, John? Would you be if you had a choice? Oh, well, I had a choice. Um, and so the story. My old man was they were Millwall and West Ham. The family. Our man was Millwall, and his brother was Millwall. But mm. when we played in '65, yes, I'm that old. I remember that we played. They, uh, West Ham uh, played Preston. And so the whole family supporting West Ham, you know, that apartment, one or two of the Millwall fans who didn't, I don't think they were that bothered. But I just, a little voice piped up. I want Preston to win. I wanted the Northerners to win. So I was took against West Ham before I actually followed Tottenham even. I took against them and they won that game, go 3-2. But I, I really wanted Preston to win. And it's like the white shirts. The funny thing is, that's where Tottenham got the white shirts from, from Preston, turn of the century, apparently, because they, they that white shirts, blue shorts, that's where it come from. They were the top team. They had a lot of Scots players who played great football. That was a sort of link. So I took against West Ham just to be, you know, awkward all the way back in 19... I think it was 60. It was either 63 or 65. It was one of those years. It was the first cup final I can remember. We were watching yeah. the old uh, Granada Rentals TV. And uh, you know, radio rentals we used to used to hire it for two bob a week to tell you in them days. And um, you know, I supported Preston. I scored against West Ham even then, you know. So when my my uncle Kenny died a few years ago, and they had to wake at the old Berlin ground, and I turned up, and his brother Ray said his brother's dead, but he can't wait for me to come. He go, oh, wait, come here, come over here to the to the big <laughs> picture window for the for the picture. What do you think of that? But you love coming here, don't you? And I said, right, I've probably got more happy memories here than you have, son. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of right. It was always good banter, you know, and yeah. all that. So, uh, yeah, he's a big one. But I've seen us. I was standing right behind that, the goal when Brooking curled that shot in for us in the, it, for them in the 70s to make it 2 I think it 2 0. I've seen us take a few pastings over there, you know, um, on and off the pitch, even back in them days, you know. So, you know, this is the big one. And, um, you know, to be fair, through the noughties, we generally got a result there. You know, we've, we did. Yeah, we've yeah. had the best. We've really had the best of it. You shouldn't forget that. Yeah, yeah. They've come back yeah. in a little bit more. This so they, were, they were lucky to get a result against us. They freely admitted to me we played them off the park that mm. uh, earlier this season at home. We really did. So, you yeah. know, fingers crossed tomorrow. It, it just, you don't quite know. We're not that. We're not like we're that weird. We're just like a lot of teams. What did, one of the things defines the EPL this year is that apart from that front three, they're all everyone's everyone's inconsistent. A bit streaky. Wolves, you know, Villa, even you know, everyone, yeah. everyone's capable of beating everybody else on their day. You know, yeah. so and and what what bothers me is away from home. You know, there mm. can be a lack of fighting spirit. I was absolutely disgusted. At the um, the Fulham game, I was working in Brighton that night. Funny enough, and with me and me boys, and went out. They're both Tottenham fans. They were working with me, me with sons, and oh, we just ended up just like fuck it, you know. I'll <laughs> way through the second. That's, half, a, lot, that's a lot. a lot of us felt, John, watching it. Yeah, yeah. Back to the venue, you know. Back. I, I bet you. I bet you wish you stayed on all night, John, performing. Didn't you on the back I, of that? Well, I, what's that, mate? I bet you wish you stayed on all night performing on the back of that result. Oh, I absolutely. bet you could have done it all night. I'll tell you what, I wish I was in. I was. Wish I was in. I'll tell you. If, I'm already got. I'm already looking at property in the South Sea Islands, South Pacific. If I was to win that league, mate, oh, we're all going to go there. Deserted islands out there, no internet, satellite. Oh, mate, I tell you, I tell you, I'll just, stay out, a I'll just, I'll just go go and live on a little wetthole, little rocky outcrop <laughs> in the Pacific for like 15 years, see me life out. You know, I can't stand the fault of that geezer in that Arteta. I, I my, uh, horrible got interior, I'm, I'm, horrible I'm, interior I'm, designer. But I, I mean, that show, I just that you know, I. They, me boy, they will give up on it. Even me keyboard player's a Liverpool fan. And he was like, how can you be that shit? It's, like, oh, it's <laughs> embarrassing. I was young, I stuck with it on the phone. I just went back. We left the boozer. I just went back to the dressing room. Mate, shocking. And what bothered me with that, I know it, it's a little bit with us. This is the, I do get wound up with it at times. Well, Andrew's mm -hmm. just got his philosophy and he sticks to it. We're Spurs. We're mad we are. You know, and you think, yeah, you know, Silver... 
completely mugged him off that night, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, completely won the tactical battle, and it really bothers me. It's yep. ugly. It's like seeing someone you love getting a boxing ring with their chin out and their guard down getting hammered. You think, keep your guard up! Put your hands up! You know, true, you know uh, we're mad, we are. We'll just lead with our chin, you know? It's, it's we've had a few of that, John, haven't we? We've we're, we're, we're had a few of them, the Brighton away. You know, again, look at some of the home games we've had. I think, again, that is why I think, like you said there, John, there will be that concern. I'll say, for our listeners and audio, obviously, you're going to be listening to the way to commute to the ground. For those that are going to be going there or watching it later this evening, that there will be that element of concern that, look, West Ham away on the best of times is never easy. But because we've had a couple of indifferent results, but what I must add is, Spurs, to be fair, they've got one of the strongest away records in the Premier League. I think you look at Spurs in general, they've been really good in terms of the top sides. They've got away to United. They've got a point. Should have really won there, in my opinion. Arsenal at the Emirates, you know, the early part of the season could have gone there. And dare I say on the day, might have even come away with more than just a point. You know, we know we've got obviously Anfield to come, Stanford Bridge to come. We've got difficult places to come. Uh, I think when you look at the nine games, I think this will be one that you earmarked. And you just really are not sure what kind of Tottenham are going to turn up. So, Chris, if I ask you in terms of that weekend result against Luton, to not go heavily into it too much. Look, we know that we're really struggling at the moment to kind of break sides down. And the fact that we look at our kind of first halves of every home game this year, we've really struggled to find a way through to the point that Spurs have not scored a single goal in the first 45 minutes of any match at the Top Stadium in 2024. And I think, again, we've had this, you know, concern of the way that we're not starting games maybe too fast or not scoring in the first half. Does that matter, Chris, for you? if Spurs are still winning games. Is that a big concern? It's just, it concerns me the way that we're winning these games, if I'm honest. Like, that win over the weekend, for me, we should have won that comfortably for a number of reasons. You know, like, Luton had a lot, a few of their key players out. And, you know, it just, we were at home. I, I was expecting a comfortable win, not something where, you know, first, for some reason, with this habit of us playing, like, pretty bad like not bad or just 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 low performance on the foot in the first half and then we go mm. out in the second for yep. me it's not comfortable I don't like it um, I know it's three points at the end of the day and that is what matters but to me I'm scared that we're going to get caught out at some point and there are a few players I feel that are just I, I'm not criticizing them I just feel performance wise there needs to be something sorted and I think Ange needs to be a bit firm on some of the players if you are not performing on the pitch drop them for the next game. You need to, you, you basically need to prove your, your performance on the pitch. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Um, if I am to name a few players, I think this and Kulu for the next game, I think they need to be dropped in my in my opinion. I, I don't know what's happened with Basuma. I think he is a fantastic player. We've seen what he can do. I feel like ever since the suspension, he isn't as aggressive on his feet ever since then. And I think that makes even Madison uh, play a bit more deep as well, because I, I guess, is it him just basically, um, you know, making up for that? But I don't, I, I just feel like he's he's not as aggressive as he, he usually has been. Um, but for me, I would have dropped, I would drop Kulu and I would drop um, this in uh, for the West Ham game. But, you know, as, as well as the negatives, there are obviously positives as well. Like, look at Brennan now. He is progressing. This is exactly what I've been saying all along. Like, it's it's amazing. For me now, he's put his place to be in the first team. But as we did say in the green room as well, you know, I guess if you're not playing in the first team, it's less pressure. So maybe that is why he is, you know... Before, you Do know, well the bench. He, yeah, yeah. He literally completely changed the game as soon as he came on. And yep. I, I just feel like with, with Kulu as well, maybe he's just a bit doesn't know what to do sometimes with his um, decision making. He's a bit, um, he's just not confident. And I feel like he loses the ball a bit. His passes are a bit sloppy. So to me, I don't know if he's been caught out himself. I don't know what's happened with Kulu. But again, I'm not trying to criticise these players because I know 100% that they are brilliant. They're fantastic. We've seen what they can do. But that is why I think Ange needs to now be a bit more firm with them. If you are going to perform well, you get in the first team. If not, I'm going to drop you. It's just you, you've got to, you've got to change it up, you know, at some yep. point. Um, but you know, like I said, this is our first season, guys. I can see the progression, but there is a few things that still need to be picked out here. There's a lot, lot of things that we can do about this, you know. Um, so, I 
three points at the end of the day, but I wasn't comfortable with that win. And, you know, going now to West Ham tomorrow, which I think is going to be a big game, um, it, I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair to say, Chris. I think, again, many would outline the concerns you've got there. I would say it's rightly so. I mean, Miles bringing you in. You know, we have to remember Spurs have earned 22 points from losing positions in the Premier League. Only Liverpool have accumulated more to that. How would you sum up, Miles, your feeling going into games at the moment, predominantly at home, but also away? I mean, is there a concern that we haven't seen that level performance that we've had in those first nine, ten games? Or is it, again, the fact that I mentioned a lot that, you know, when teams are coming to Tottenham, but nobody put him nine, ten behind the ball, it's not easy to play an attractive brand of football when you're having to try and break down those amount of players. And again, we've seen it this season. We've seen City and Arsenal really play a game, obviously, on the Sunday, where to many, that will arguably be the two not the start of a, a, a controversial thing here. It's the two better sides in the in the Premier League. You can't argue with that. And you see really when teams do put many behind the ball, it does make it an attractive watch. So how do you feel the mood is around the form of the moment for you? No, no. I, do you know what? I, I've heard a lot of what people are saying. But that, so the second half trend, right? And you can you could see it after when we played West Ham and Villa early in November, right? The players he had at his disposal, we had these fast starts, but what ended up happening, we started fading in the second half and we were conceding goals. And, and quite a lot of them, especially when we had Royale and Ben Davis at the back. And I've noticed and just tweaked it a little bit to where he's keeping it like calm in the first half. And then as soon as that second half starts, he's going for that fast start. Now, the two games where it hasn't worked, Wolves, Fulham. But the other games, you kind of say it has worked in the sense of where he's trying to get that fast start in that second half. And I think, especially when all the internationals were going on as well in January, I didn't. I think he saw it as he couldn't play that way because the players we had at the time just couldn't last 90 minutes, especially when we had like Benton Coy, who's only just come back from injury. Hoiberg was around in the team at the time as well. So I think and just tweaked it. And that's what the problem is now. He's got all these players back and he doesn't know how to change it back. Because obviously now it's just that the players have got used to it. And it's a bit like what a certain manager said last year. He's not telling them to play that way. They're just going and doing it. So and I think mm. the same's happening now because you have a lot of those still in the changing room. So you're going to have it. And for him, he like when after that Fulham game, he said he has to change the mentality. That's a very hard thing to do when these players, a lot of these players have been around for years. So... It's yep. kind of, and just got a tough job on his hands. And I think he can see that. And I, I know everyone says he's stubborn, but I think he changed it. And you can see, I think off, I think it was after Bournemouth, he kind of just tweaked it a little bit not to have those fast starts. And I think that's what the biggest problem we have. And that's why we've been so much better in the second half. Joel, come over to you. You kind of mentioned it in your intro there. You're not sure what kind of spurs you're going to get. We've seen, obviously, a concerning couple of away performances in the course of the season. I know many will still feel, and again, I'm in agreement that we're kind of ahead of the project, I think if you said to anyone, you would lose your greatest striker of the last however many years and Spurs would be kind of sitting there, you know, in contention for fourth coming into the season. And I didn't tell me about how we went out of the cup, so I would be obviously a bit upset about that. But the element of the fact, John, is where we are at the moment. Do you still feel we're ahead of the project, in your opinion? And is there a concern over the form for you? Yeah, I mean, this guy, we've got, he's got us back into the into the pack behind the, the, the elite team. So we're in a pack with... Man United, Villa, Wolves, Brighton, West Ham, you know, not terribly far off. Newcastle, who, you know, not that many points behind us, those teams, you know, 10 points or whatever. You know, they've had their injuries as well. They've been in cup competitions. So we're in that pack. So we're back there, which is kind of when Poch, you know, for a while under Poch, we were a little bit beyond the chasing pack. We were actually challenging for the title. Yeah, I don't think we ever thought we'd really win it because we just don't have that belief to really get over the finishing line as a club. Both Christina and Marlon made some great points there, by the way, I must say. I think for just for me, I have to talk about that first half thing, you know. I think teams have got a bit wiser to us. So they're a little bit more cautious. They adopt their shape in the, in, in the first half of games. But what we, uh, my neighbours, um, he's a big Man City fan. And, um, you know, I was talking to him about this and he said, this is what happened with City. They just win games late on because you type, you know, you keep probing, you keep moving the ball, you keep switching it. You physically and mentally tie them out. So it's no wonder that you start to do better in the second half. So there's an element to that. With Basuma, he's really not the player he was. 
I don't know if it's the red cards. I wonder if it's the malaria. You know, he had malaria. Um, you know, all you got to do, I mean, you know, the biggest, one of the biggest malaria hotspots for years was the Thames, up to, up to, went into the 1800s, I think. It was a malaria, it was malaria ridden the Thames. And you read, they called it the egg, didn't they? The egg, the egg, you know, I think they called it. And it, it, you read the accounts and the worst thing, everyone's just tired, you know. So it must, it could well be an element with a geezer. He it, it looks tired. It, it look, it, I mean, that was such a... He looks so, you know, kind of, you know, just doesn't look the dynamic bloke making those forward runs that he did. But the yep. problem for Ange, none of them have been really great since the other players, since they've come back from injury. So Bent occurred just as he was looking good in that Villa game at home that Matty Cash done him, didn't he? And ever since then, when he's come back, he's not looked the same. He was looking himself in that game. He was bossing it, as I recall. Yep. You know? Yeah, right. And, of... and he's the only other guy who could really handle that number six position, you know, really. You know, you wouldn't really give it, you know, Madison's definitely a 10. Lo Celso, I like's a 10, you know. Skip, to be fair, when Skip's put there in that number six, he kind of played there away to Fulham in the cup game this year. And he got monstered, to be quite honest. And Skip, but Skip, he looks to have gone a bit out of the picture at the moment, doesn't he, really? You know, um, I can only think in training, he might be struggling with Angie's system. You know, who knows? So I think those, those are big factors as well with, with, with it, you know. But um, it, who knows with football? You know, we're not there. We're not seeing the training. Who knows how happy players are? But I, I bet you we end up at close season getting a num number six. So, I mean, I'm... I'm kind of optimistic, but you can't blame me for being cautiously optimistic. No. You know, we're great. Yeah, we're going for fourth or fifth again. You know, we might sneak up. You know, it'd be nice to see a bit of silverware. You know, oh, don't you know, John? I feel about that. Don't get me started. Yeah. I, I did wonder when he said, "No, we're not aiming for fourth." And you think, "Oh, mate, don't give this lot an excuse, even more excuses, not to achieve." Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, we've had years of. Of you know having, having excuses or little reasons why we couldn't actually win something you know but having said that you know I do believe in that thing that you just keep improving every little thing and you just generally aim at being the very best you can and I do then think the other stuff takes care of itself just by yeah. default you become a winning team you know I, I think but, the key but, is but, go on, John. I think the key is well John I'll let you come back on is that the key is that in the summer what we've got to do is we've got to recruit players that are better than what we've already got. And what I mean by that is actually improve the first team and not just to improve the squad. I think that is really key because I think you look at this season, obviously Vicario walked straight in, Van der Ven walked straight in, Madison walked straight in, Werner, we'll come on to him shortly. I know that's a bit of a debate amongst the Spurs fan base about whether they would want to activate that clause. But um, I think that's key, isn't it, John? I mean, it's in terms of bringing in better players than what you've already got in terms of the first 11, right? Which I think is where Pochettino struggled to some degree because there was all that old age argument when Spurs went 518 days about signing a player that, um, oh, we couldn't improve the first 11. Well, you can and you should have done because Spurs were close at that point, John, you picked up on of really competing for something then. That's right. Well, we all know, you yeah. know, it, it was mad, wasn't it? You know, we get to the yeah. Champions League final and then you, you just need that extra couple of players and you don't invest. And we, yeah. we were short then, to be honest, but this has yeah. been something characterise the Enic ownership, you know, yep. we all remember with Harry Redknapp, we were genuinely two or three players away from having a league title challenge inside. And just when he needed a top striking defender, we got Ryan Nelson and the Saha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And no offence then, in their day, they were fantastic players. We just bought them like 10 years too late, you know. Yep. Uh, just that, hopefully that's now stopped and... Uh, they see that that's, you, you know, you've now reached this point, you've achieved this thing at this great stadium, all this money coming in, albeit blokes like me, we don't get a discount, yeah, you know, because I didn't even get me discount this season because oh, we, we run out of a quotient in that area. Sorry, you know, I was, what do I do? Well, you have to apply for another area. Oh, can you tell me the areas of the ground where there are still old person's discounts? Oh, no, you just have to apply. Oh, right, Um. okay. You know, 
Unbelievable. I mean, I couldn't yeah. think of any other entity, let alone football club, in the world who would do that, you know. But whatever. So, and it looks like now they want to phase out, you know, old people, just not enough money of them. Get out of it, you know. Get the, <laughs> get other, get the foreign tourists. They, 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 they want to see the way, John. They want to see the way. You old sod. Go and get out of it. They want to see the way, John. You run out that stadium, a new stadium as late as, late as you can to get to get well, back I, from them. If they see the pace well, on you. I, I'm not boasting it. I set a new record for getting down. I do come out, shirt off, right? And I jog up the high road to Seven Sisters. And I stay to the end. So I'm out of there. And I'm a lot of a lot of caught, engaged in court, a lot of twisty turning through the people. Se- 17 minutes, I think it was, I got down there. You know, so uh, and Maybe that's with all the crowds and 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 you got stopped with you know to go over Lordship Lane and everything. So yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get down there because I was out went out with a missy, so we had a set E. So we went to see um Doom, Doom Two. So she loved it, fell asleep fifteen minutes in. So I just let her have a kid, you know. But anyway, another, whatever. Another feeling, mate. Another feeling, John. Another feeling. Well, I've just I'm such an insulating company. But she loved it. We had, you know, she, we had a nice cup of tea and everything, and then the film started. She, Locked down, she was asleep, you know. But it was nice. But we enjoyed. I enjoyed the comfort of the cinemas now more than yeah. the film. But anyway, the problem, is, about... the problem is, John. I don't make it past the trailers these days. You take it to the cinema. I'm gone after the trailers. Um, I tell you what. We'll bring it back. I want to talk about Decky for a second because Decky was one of the first changes that Spurs made against Luton. I mean, look, we'll come around if I can to you, Chris, on him because. Again, we'll assert certain players ahead of the weekend or oh, weekend or midweek game, of course. We've got Spurs obviously having a space we've had three to four games in the space of a week. So it's the first time really that Spurs will be able to get some real genuine momentum into games. And Spurs have spoke about this a lot. And I just spoke about the fact that maybe this season that has been a frustration that we've had our game and then we had a kind of international break. We've had a pre-arranged game and it's been rescheduled and there's been a real stop start nature to Spurs this season. But you know, Kulusevsky, he had the lowest pass success rate of any starting player against Luton by a long way, 66.7%. You mentioned in your intro for you, Chris, he's one of the players that you'd like to see drop to the bench. Is it just a fact with Decky that, in my opinion, I think we said in the green room, that when Decky is on his top form, he looks absolutely sensational. But when he's off it, he's so off it. And it's, again, we all know Decky's a great player. I think the key thing for him is just trying to find that level of consistency, right? 100%. 100%. It's so frustrating because, like you said, we know how amazing he is. We saw it, get you know, when he first signed for us, he was absolute... We were like, where's this guy come from? Like, how did we get him? He He's just... He's phenomenal. So that's why it makes this even more irritating when I saw him on, you know, on Saturday. I thought, where is this? Where's the consistency? It was just... The, the passing was just really sloppy and I just... It just really felt... Um, you know, there was just no confidence in him when he had the ball on him. But, I mean, I don't know what the issue is. I don't know if he's just been caught out or something. I don't know. I I, I honestly, I, I can't really think of the reason for it. I, it, It's just really irritating because I, I can say this now and then next week he will have a, an incredible game and then it's all forgotten about. I, I don't, I honestly don't really know what the issue is. But as soon as he did come off, you know, Brennan Johnson completely changed the game. And it was just, uh, I've I've supported him. I've, I've always supported that guy. But the passing, the relationship between um, Brennan and, and Sonny, that game was, it was just, it was class. Um, he knew exactly. So he's just so well planned ahead with where he's going to put that ball. Um, and I think, again, that that is where confidence comes in. So every game, he just seems to be progressing and progressing now. So I'm so, so happy with him. And I'm, I'm glad we got the three points. And to be honest, I'll, I'll put it down to him mainly. Mm. Um, but yeah, he, I, I feel it's a hard decision to say this with Kulu's B drops because like we did say, is it actually better for Brennan to be on a, a bench player? Because is it less, you know, pressure is there less him, like pressure said. for him? I yep. don't know. Mm. That is really difficult to say that. But I, I, I feel like he deserves a place to be in the first team if I'm, if I'm honest. I think he yep. should do. Um, and then... Worst comes to worst, you know, we'll, we'll sub um, Kulu back on, see what he can do, if he can make a big change. I don't know. But I think that's where we need to really rotate a lot with Ange Ball. Because it's just so aggressive and these players are not used to this fast pace, you know, of, of football. If you've had an injury, I can imagine it doesn't do it so well, you know, on your for the players. Which is exactly what you said, Ricky. We need to buy players who are not just, mm, a little, you know... 
not at, just a little bit better. You know, we need them to be top form, all of the players yeah. that we buy in now. Yeah. Because if this is going to be fast pace, we need a strong, strong bench. If we want to progress, if we want to be top, you know, like Man City, whatever, that's exactly what they've done. You look at their bench and it's scary. And that's exactly what we need to do if we want to progress, basically. You know, with this level of intensity of football, it needs to be rotating all the players, you know, a lot of the time. Um, so I, I just, yeah, I think that is where we need to be so strong and heavy on the summer transfer window. Um, I, it's just at, at this point, we're just learning still so much with our team at the moment. And I, I think on the right wing, we, we could do a lot of backup, I think. Um, there's just, yeah, there's a lot going on right now. You can just see the errors that we do have and... I just think we need to take all of that and then put it into the summer, summer transfer within the window. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a lot to take in. And I don't want to be too crit critical of all the players that we do have because I am always positive and I know yeah, that yeah. they are great yeah. players. But it, it's just, the the consistency, we need it. it it's just so yeah. important right now. And especially now we're coming to the end of the season now um, and we're literally in for the run at top four. It's yep. just so important that all of these players are, you know, they're going for it, but they're performing right, you know, how they should be. It's just we can't be having all of these little mistakes now because they do come and bite us in, in the arse later on. You know, that mm. that pass that Kulu did, and then I think even Sonny did like an error as well, which basically led to the, led to the, led to the goal. goal. Yep. It was just all, all a series of all of these errors, and it's like, no, we need to learn from that and not do that again because it will come and get us. So, yeah, I mean... Kulu, you, can do that. you can do yeah, better. That's you fair can do point. better. You know what's interesting, Miles? It's the first time that actually Ange seemed to actually dig out a player publicly. You know, he's never really done that in his time at Spurs. And look, I don't want to go too overly on it because I think there's a case that he actually loves Kulisevsky. He's made that very clear in previous interviews. But it was after after the game about Kulu. He said, look, we felt that in the first half, Dick was probably coming inside a little bit too much. And we felt like Timo was certainly getting some more <laughs> opportunities down the left hand side. And we thought we could get Brennan on on the right that he could equally be of a threat, which, as Chris said, he most certainly was, and, of course, changed the game. You know, I wonder for you, Miles, is it just a case of Decky in that rotation? Do you have a vibe that he'd be better to come off the bench? Is it where he's being played? You know, he actually said during the previous international mm. break that he would like to maybe feature more down the central area of the team. Yeah. Your thoughts on Decky quickly? So, yeah, quickly on Decky is he, he can't come off the bench just because Everton, when he came on, he was awful. That's the one time he did put him on the bench. And it seems that Ange, this was the first time Ange ever subbed him off quite early because usually with Kulisevsky, he plays him throughout the whole 90 minutes. He, he's like, it's the last person he thinks of, right? Or usually uses use him in the middle. But the bit I don't get, because like watching Ange, like I've watched Ange for a few years because I watched him at Celtic, and he likes his right winger to be right footed and he likes his left winger to be left footed. But with Kulisevsky, it's like he's completely changed everything. What he what he's tried to do before, and Saturday was the first time I kind of went. That's the in that second half. That's what I expect Ange to do in the way and I want Ange to play. But Kulu, yeah, he says he wants to play central. I don't think he likes playing on that right. He is predictable, but when you look at the goal involvements that he's had this season, like even before, like every time we've scored, even though he might be not be part of the city, he's part of the play. And I think that's what the biggest issue is. Spurs fans are not seeing that part. They're just seeing, I keeps cutting inside, it keeps cutting inside. But and just seeing something completely different to what we're all seeing. So it's a bit of one of those. I don't want him coming off the bench, but tomorrow I would start him instead of Johnson because I think what Christina said is absolutely right. Johnson's got to come off the bench. Mm. But Kulu has got, he's, he's, had, he's had his warning. Warning was, was on Saturday. Yeah. Let's see. Come out tomorrow, West Ham, in front of the Spurs fans. Because Spurs fans want this as much as West Ham fans. Of course, of Let, course. Let's show us that you can play this way and you want to play in this system. And that's what needs to happen. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, we talk about Kulu there. Uh, John, you brought up briefly Basuma. You know, again, it's a really interesting, you know, situation that when you look at Basuma as a player, you know, we looked at those kind of opening eight, nine games where he was actually, for me, I said at the time, and so it keeps like a broken record, that if he had kept up that trajectory... I've got no doubt he would have gone to be one of Spurs' players of the season. He was that good in the opening eight, nine games. And it's really hard to understand and manifest to really come to kind of conclusions as to why that form has dipped. You know, again, there's been arguments where he has had suspensions. Is that a reason why he's maybe gone into his show a bit more? Is it the case where, again, it's been stop-start? We've had a lot of games, as we've said, over, you know, periods where there's been international breaks. It's really hard to put your finger on it, John. I mean, do you think we'll ever see that 
same player of Basuma that we saw in those opening eight, nine games for you, John? I really don't know. Um, as I said earlier, I suspect malaria. Might, seriously, I mean, he had malaria, you know. Um, yeah, it's not. Um, a, yeah, you're right. It's not a, it's not a joking know, illness. It's serious illness. A, yeah. It, it might be just one of those tricky ones where you know you just you notice that if you're not absolutely 101 percent fit, it, you know it's very difficult, you know. Um, but players do, you know, most one of the things defines professional players they nearly all play with knocks permanently through the season. They just don't moan about it, you know. Um, it's part of football at high level, let alone the elite level, is you you're, you're always carrying knocks or you're a bit under the weather. And, uh, you know, you've got to be there for your teammates, you know. Um, I'm more worried about Decky than I am Basuma. I think, Bas I suspect Basuma will come through. Maybe he'll need to have somebody challenging him for that pivot spot directly, which could happen. I'm more worried with Decky. Um, it's puzzled me a little bit why Ange has stuck with him so, so, so much. And it's a it's an interesting thing. Apparently, he's run more than at what at the, up to a point a few weeks ago. I think Decky run more than any other player. Puts more kilometers in. Um, he, you know, when he comes coming back on that left, he's got a wand of a left foot. You could see, you know, and obviously Ange, as most modern managers, loves the inverted winger thing at times for some reason, um, and sometimes just that bread and butter ball to the far post. I don't know why we haven't utilised that more um, because we've done that uh, against Fulham. Remember, Rick Harlison scored our goal in that game in the League Cup. And, you know, I would have thought him and Rick Harlison could, you know, I'm, I'm surprised he hasn't set Rick Harlison up more, you know. Um, but just lately, for the last few weeks when he plays out wide, he looks like a bread and butter inverted winger. You know, just comes inside, doesn't really... You know, they put, they, they, I think he was recognised as being one of our danger men. So they'd have two players go out of him and he can't really seem to deal with it. That, yeah. Their goal, their breakaway goal, when you look, he had it on his right foot. All you've got to do is not is fizz it in, in that stupid corridor of uncertainty. And the geezer yeah. doesn't, you know, and they end up breaking away. By the way, with, so, with, with, with Sonny, it's like, why don't you just hack the geezer down, take the yellow card? But never mind, we we got to start doing what City do, you know, do the old cynical fouls to stop them breaking. But it, that worries me more. And, you know, he's obviously, you know, it's it's noticeable, everything comes down the left with mm. Werner, you know, and out on the right. He's he, he wants him getting more chalk on his boots, doesn't he, Ange? And he's not. He's coming inside looking for the ball. And managers hate that because you're taking the shape away. You're not, you're not got the out ball. He'd, he'd probably say, I don't care if you're out there being marked, mate. I want you to bloody stand there, you know, because <laughs> you're going to stretch the play, you know. Um, don't come coming in, you know. And and I think he gave a little bit of a warning to him. I think you're right. And I also think that uh, he gave Madison a little bit of a warning because he took he didn't take him off on 85 minutes, did he? You know. No, no, that's it. You said, it? And you said Mad we're so, saying Madison's safe, is he? You know, I, I tell you what, I you would know what? not be I would not be hundred percent surprised if he starts low Celso tomorrow. Mm. By the way, it's number ten, you know. <laughs> you know what? It's interesting because I think again when you look at debate, sorry, the, I've got to say for those listeners on audio, the, the comments are pouring in. <laughs> they're waiting they're waiting, John, with breaking breath if we're gonna get a wiener as a Werner coming out from you later on. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well Werner, I, I can make German, it's no problem. He's okay, I like he's a good player. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like one. I hope, I, I, I hope we keep him on because he's effective. I do. Yeah, he's effective. I you've seen enough, admit. John, already. So, I mean, on Werner, very quickly. If I ask you today, you're going to make a decision. You, you, from what you've seen, you'd, you'd activate him 15 million euros. You think he's he, worth he that? He improves the team. He improves the team. He, he's, he's been there at the top level. He gives you width. He's, 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 he's intelligent. Yeah, he's. He, I'd have him. Yeah, for, for the money, he's good. He's, he's a deal. And, and you don't think we'll get better? You don't think we'll get better value for money? No. Um, do you tell me an available left winger? Mm. You know, this is a guy that's played at the top level, so it's not like you're going to the Italian league taking a chance on somebody being able to step up. For yeah. me, this guy can do it. Yeah, he can do it. You know, he's finishing. He's one of these blokes. If you let him think about a finish, he'll blow it. So I was right yeah. behind him when he went through, and it's just like you can just be he won't score, and he doesn't score. But, you know, but it's not, he, it's not, it, you know. but he hasn't got time to think yeah. about it. The yeah. finish that he got the other week with that right foot. 
Yeah. Um, a bit of absolutely fantastic. What a great finish. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look, to be fair to the bloke, he, he, look, I think again. At, at the moment, who would you have? Decky or Vern or, or Vayner? <laughs> yeah, who would you have? You know, you're going to have the German all day long, you know. I think the frustration with Decky, you know he can do it. I think you know Decky can do it. And I think with Werner, I mean, look, again, the thing do we know with Werner... Do, do, do we know, you know, OK, he had a good se- he had a good sort of art season, half mm. a season. That's great. Yeah, yeah. OK. He I did think, it, think... but do, do we know he yeah. can really... Do- I remember Gary Neville saying... Mm. They've got they've got, he's a, they've got a brilliant number ten and he he said something along the lines of him like being a sixty million pound player or something something like that. Um, yeah. After we beat Forest, I think was it Forest uh, yeah. away? Yeah, Forest away. Yeah, like that. And I, even at the time, I just thought, mm, I, I don't I don't know really. Not I don't think he's proven it yet. Mm. You know. So with Werner, yeah, all day long. Listen, you know, he, that, he, he yeah. improves the squad when we yeah. got him. We needed a le- a proper left sided player, and him and Johnson, Johnson wide right, in wide left, is simple football. Mm. You know, is very effective. What bothers me actually is that you need more of a number nine, maybe bringing them into play. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's, that's where Ricardson. Yeah. I, I personally would like to see Rick- Ricardson start tomorrow. You know, and I personally, if the likes of Sonny or or Madison got, you know, were, were rested, you know. Uh, just given half a game, you know they're going to come on us. I wouldn't be crying about that. Yeah, because I, yeah. I, you'd have got to use the whole squad. Mm. Rick Carlson's Brazil's number nine. He's not a mug. It's a bit nutty at times, that, you know, the younger <laughs> geezer. But you know, yeah. but he's, he's the, no mug. You know, the only, the only thing I would say for me on Werner is that my only concern with him is that although listen, the stats don't lie. It's an assist or goal every other game. You can't lie on those stats. The only thing for me is that if that fifteen million. It's restricting us from going to have to buy a real genuine top winger. So, for example, you know, if that 15 million is going to stop us from putting that money towards someone like an Eze, who might cost 50, 60, that's where I'd be frustrated. I'd be frustrated if we've got them sp- spent 15 million on Werner and it's we feel that position now is sorted and we move well, on. Do to you know what? One. I'm not sure if I'd stick Eze out on the wing. He's a great player. Well, the, I, I, that's I, the thing, I, I, I think, I think with someone like Eze could play a multitude of positions, right? And yeah. I think that's the only thing with Werner. We know to respect to him. The same with him, you could play him on a number of different positions, but I do genuinely feel that Eze is a player that, as we know, has got the capability of playing a magnitude of positions that can finish on a more regular basis. But listen, I don't disagree that Werner's got... If yeah, Eze's that another two... guy, he's going to be wanting to come inside and shoot and get on the ball, a bit yeah. like Grealish, or, and, and that's great. But look, even even <laughs> Pep wants Grealish eyes to up. get chalk on his... and out wide. And Werner is a real pro. He's mustard. He's, he brings the ball yeah. down. He's just down the left. This gives you whip. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And it, and he'll get you eight or nine goals a season, Werner. Yeah. And Johnson will get you sixteen goals a season or something. And he's, he's you know absolutely. just this yeah. lovely simple football because in that first half it's like oh fucking Ada, you're making it so fucking complicated. You know, <laughs> and suddenly football is like the hardest fucking game to play, and it looks like we're playing a champion fucking league team with Luton. <laughs> and then second half you got <laughs> some whip. <laughs> And they're just him, putting, them, the... putting them, them low balls to the far post for the opposing wigger to run onto. Yeah. And so it's like me with music when you're in a shit session and it, it's too complicated, too many complicated calls and they're trying to be clever. It's like, for fuck's sake, let's get a basic shape to this. You've got to get older <laughs> things sometimes, you know. Yeah, and, do you know, what? and there you go. I mean, I, but I hope, Izzy, I've got a funny feet. I, I thought he looked very pelly at the end of that Paris game. Yeah. Yeah, he looked very pelly with everyone. It looked like this, you know, the kind of, you know, welcoming him into the fold. And I'm on, another one, by the way. If this Gallagher joins, I think he's a good player. Mm. This Gallagher, he's a proper number eight, come number ten sort of guy, you know. So if he joins yet again, look, there's an argument for saying, is he absolutely world class individual? Well, people like Ange, is. Klopp's probably the most similar bloke to him. Mm. They want that number eight. They want that hard-working team. They want width. They yeah. want pace, you know. And so, you know, they're sitting, someone like Decky, you know, I think Ange really likes him. He's given him a bit of a warning now. But although Ange likes him, I'm mm. not sure, you know, would he be the, 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 the real player that Ange would like, you know. I'm not sure. You know, it's funny that he wants – does he really want the sort of inverted winger guy? You know, I'm not sure. You know, mm. when you look at Johnson getting down the outside, because it's not like I can understand Decky coming in if Poros 
going wide. But it, yeah, the full backs are always inside. So you've got two. They're not interchanging when it's like that. And it doesn't seem like Porro's given license to really go down that right. Yeah. I did wonder that because Porro's probably a better, is a better crosser of a ball than Decky. I think one of the best in the squad, isn't he? I think you look at yeah. Poro. And I definitely... think, by the way, Poro and Udogi both off the boil a little bit. Nothing to worry about, but yeah. just a little bit off the boil, both of them, mm. compared to what they were, I thought. Yeah, that's yeah. no, fair. Miles, bringing you in if I can, just on Werner, you know, uh, and just come out and said in his pre match presser ahead of the game, he was asked about how pleased he's with him and what the future holds. He said, look, in terms of his future, I think like most players that's going to be made in the summer. But he's been an important signing. I said at the time, people forget that when we signed him, Sonny wasn't here. He was away at the Asian Cup and then Richie got injured. So we would have to have someone to fill in that massive hole in our lineup without Timo there. And it's fair to say he's made an impact in every game. Yeah, he's probably liked a couple more goals. But at the same time, he's an important part of our structure. And I thought he would be a really good signing. And he was, again, good for us on the weekend. He's been in the last few games, but I do think there's more improvement in him. And he needs to understand our game more. I mean, Miles have also put a... I don't know. Guns here, it sounds really, really harsh. But I mean, if I was to ask <laughs> to, make, to make a decision in terms of, you know, what to do with him, would you be signing him right now on a perm? No. Or do you still need more? No, no. You, you, what you guys, both you and Christina, both said something earlier, right? Mm. Which is very, very important to this whole scenario, right? You both said, if you're improving the 11, your bench will then approve, uh, be, be improved. Werner's not coming in to improve our 11. He's not. Let's, let, we all have to be realistic about this, right? Yeah. He's not coming in to improve our 11. He misses way too many chances in this system, right? He's a good player. Don't get me wrong, but he misses way too many chances. If 16 million, right, was offered, if he was offered to City, Arsenal and Liverpool, teams were trying to catch, even Villa, would they be taking him? Probably not, right? Champions League football next year, let's, let's say that's where we're going into would he get into Champions League sides, right? They'll look at his past and see what he's done at Leipzig, right? Forget the Chelsea incidents, right? Because everyone can be bad at Chelsea, right? But yeah. he went back to Leipzig to improve. And even they don't want him. That says a lot, right? And at the moment, yeah, you can see 16 million is a Levy deal all over it. Mm -hmm. That's the worrying thing about this, is that it's got it's screaming. And you're right. If we wanted to go in for two top-class wingers, right? in the summer and maybe a striker. Yeah. Yep. Is that 16 million going to be like, no, we can't buy this play because you've just spent 16 that, million that, on That's, that's on my element of it. Yeah, that's yeah. my thing on it. I think as a, right. as a squad player, yeah. I get it. But I think if that's going to, that money's going to stop us, enable us to go and get... Ex exactly. A proven quality winger, that'd be my concern. Well, and, 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 and that's the, the concern. Is, I, I agree, I agree, Marlon. It's yeah. definitely got Levy all over it. Like, I always think <laughs> a Levy, I always think a Levy is the bloke who comes out with the car <laughs> He comes out. He comes out the pulpit cabin, and, and you think I'm fucked. This is just going to take me money out of me. It's, you know what I mean? He's got that about him. Like he's good businessman. You know, we all know. But, so but it's got. Yeah. But, but I will say. But I will say this: Havertz. When Arsenal, what have Arsenal signed him for? He's not really going to improve their team. He was at Chelsea. He's not really. But this he was is this... the elite level, but dropped down. But he's doing very well now. Look at mm. Kovacic. Who would have thought Kovacic would have gone to, you know, not a different kind of player, but, you know, was at Chelsea, yeah. probably passed it. Now, a good player is a good player. Werner can do a job and he's actually, you know, he's really got something to prove. So, for me, he, he edges. You don't sign him now you because you he could get badly injured for all, you know. You wait until the last possible opportunity and then you weigh it up. Maybe there's, maybe there's a couple of really incredible wingers are available that are just going to be... 10 times better than him. Maybe a new investor comes into Tottenham or something, you know, but I yep. don't know. I, um, uh, for me, I like him. You know, I enjoyed his before. I thought he was one of our best players. He gave us the outlet. He was the cause of the foot. He, he, he might as well have scored that equalizing goal. Oh, he made it. Yeah, he, can't deny. he made it. He made it. Yeah, him, yeah. You know, I've made so, the position. Yeah. And, 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 and he, you know, he puts, he knows what he puts a ball in, picks a man out. So, no, I quite like him. He's in, he's in me good books. Decky's in me bad books. Because it's like, mate, what are you doing? I know you want to be a number 10, but you're a number 7, old son. You know? <laughs> you know, like, you know. And, and, you know, occasionally put a ball in with your right. Maybe you want to practice crossing with your right. And just, you know, because that ball screaming to be fizzed into the far post. And then if we go a goal up three minutes into that game, then maybe Lynchy, my mate, would have been right and it would have been 7-0. But instead, we give away a completely ridiculous goal 
and then it's an uphill but they've got something to hold on yeah. to you know yeah so Miles, just quickly for you yeah. it's a no at the moment am i right no. in saying it yeah of course and just quickly to add to that so when that goal went in on saturday that equalizer i said I was thankful the defender got there before Werner. Yes, Werner, Werner, yeah. Werner would have missed. Yeah. <laughs> right? I can't. I'm, 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 I, I, if you, I think he's better when he hasn't got time to think about it. But you could put money on the bloke. Yeah, I mean, when he goes through, he's never. Yeah. Been, I must admit, he's one. But, end, but, but I still think he'll get you a few goals, and he's, you yeah. know, he'll set. He, he, he's, he's more than worth his place in the team with what he'll create. And he will still get a few goals for you. So you got too fast, and he's experienced. But that's that's something. And he's still not. He's not like thirty-three years of age. You know what I mean? So I like Germans because they're generally sort of really on it. You know. Absolutely, go on. No, just what just one quick thing as well, right? We've we've not been playing great teams recently either. We've been playing poor teams, right? And we've all said we're starting in second half, and this and Werner's been part of this. Right, and I think if we can get a better quality player on the wings, right, this goes throughout the whole team. If we can get better quality, mm. we won't struggle against Luton. We won't be struggling against other teams to break them down because we need so much quality on that wings to get us through games, because that's what an and system relies on. And what I what I've noticed is in this system, wingers will be made to look good. It's just dependent on whether they're going to finish those chances when they get them. And that's the, my biggest problem with Werner. We could, like, we could have signed Werner 18 months ago with Conte. It's, we've moved on from that. We need to start signing better. And that's where we need to get to next. If, look, 60 million, everyone will go, oh, it's low risk and all that. But it's a massive risk because he's he's going to be play, playing games next season. right? And he was a massive risk when he came in now because it's all about top four. Right, well, let's, we'll be honest. Ange might be saying you don't want top four, but that's the reason why he's come in to cement and give us that. It's a very high risk move if it doesn't work out because it means you lose that place and that money's gone as well. Then you know, for, if you could do qualify for the Champions League, so for me, Burner is no. Yeah. Oh, for me, I, I don't, I don't know why we'd be looking at him when you when you look at what happened in like recent games. I'd be much more worried about Decky, the money we spent on him and how he's lost form, and Bissouma. I'd be much more worried than Werner. Werner is fulfilling his function, you know, whereas Basuma isn't and Decky isn't. So for me, it don't, you know, it just doesn't. And Ange Ball is about little triangles and it's about sending the guy wide. It's not, it's great as a bonus if you've got somebody who can take players on, absolutely. But it's about Ange Ball. It's about what happens in, in midfield as we play the ball through to the winger. Is 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 more important, and then what happens there? If they've got the pace to get behind and get the proper ball in, and that worries me with Decky. He doesn't quite have that pace. He hasn't got that turn of pace that you see with Johnson on the right flank. You know, whereas Decky's very clever in tight situations. You know, I must say, and you know when we under Conti and at times earlier this season, he looked fantastic out wide as an out ball. He was great. He wouldn't give it away. He'd keep it tight. But that doesn't seem to be happening. Instead, he seems to just turn in in his field. It reminded me of when we had Doherty playing as a wing back, you know, or when Ben Davis played at a wing back last. You know, they come back in field because they just they haven't got the pace to get outside a defender and whip it in. So the lot, so they said, well, just I'm not going to be the guy responsible for putting a shit cross in. I'm going to just play it safe and hand responsibility over to somebody else. And that's what, you know, that's where some of our football, when we're looking at a turgid worst recently, reminds me of Conti ball. I've got the ball. There's nothing on. <laughs> I'm just going to give it to you. I'm not going to take responsibility for anything. Yeah, it's an ele and, element and it's about the team finding yeah. a solution to that. Yeah. It's not about one guy coming forth as the Messiah, necessarily. Mm. It's about the team as a team having faith in the system is what and to play it out fast to get the guys away wide you know but the Werner thing's no big deal it's just I I would I personally am rating him at the moment totally understand what Marlon's saying I can't say Marlon's talking rubbish that's rubbish because there could be football's football and if there's a yeah. bet there might be somebody who's just faster quicker etc etc but right now for me I just like the guy I think I like the guy He's fulfilling a function, you know. I mean, yes. my son's the same. My son's very harsh on the players. He'd, he'd be saying the same as Marlon. He says that all the time with me. But, I mean, you've got to be realistic as you build it as you build it up. And the bigger the egos, the harder it is to build a team. 
you know you want players who are thankful for their chance and this guy will be thankful you know the top yeah. opportunity to be at that high level again you know totally agree chris we're gonna come to you we're gonna get our 15th break in the show here quickly chris let's come to you chris um let's get your verdict very quickly on where you stand with regards to uh verna yes or no so i've got a follow-up question i want to ask you with regards to uh basuma tell me you are verna yes or no for you would you keep him uh, I'm, bit, I'm, it's, it's, I'm, I'm between in the middle of this one as well because I absolutely think his attitude is brilliant, Werner. And the, the obviously the main issue with him is his finishes. He's missed a lot of sitters, I think. And if we are able to get someone that can do this, um, can get that job done, get those goals in, then I, I, I kind of do feel like yeah, we need to go out and get someone better, someone younger. I. It's just so difficult because obviously Werner does have a hell of a lot of experience. He's been in the Premier League. He's done Champions League. He knows all about that stuff. So that is obviously that is a very important thing. I like for a squad player. I think that's very important. Um, it's uh, I, there's still time for him to sort of show more. But like Marlon said, isn't he just here for now, just to get us that top four, and then we can move on and get someone even better and. I don't want that to be an excuse. Get that 15 mil, massive bargain. That is all sorted and done. That's what I don't want. I'm I'm scared of that happening. And we know what that, you know, that is a lot that yeah. happens at Tottenham. You know, and I think we're just so in the heat of building this whole project up now. Don't mess it up by yeah. doing things, making little, you know, decisions like that, because we, we should be going in for big, bigger and better now. Um, and that that is it, basically. I, I, I'm... Before, I think I did say to keep Vern on because 50 mil, what is 50 mil in the Premier League? Is, I mean, oh, it's, for me, it's, it's, pe it's peanuts in regards peanuts, to what's obviously right? is out there. Yet. It is, but I just don't want Tottenham to be using that as an excuse to be like, no, we don't need it anymore. We're, we're sorted. Mm. It's not. Yeah. We, we yeah. still need a bigger and better backup. Um, yeah. But, you know, that that's that's my fear on it. But he he is great. I think he's he was really good. I thought at the Luton game. Um, yeah. I thought he came in really fast and he was just yeah. he he built up those goals and um, you know, but it's just the finishes. It mm. just it's not quite there for me. Um, and I we need someone that just goes in and boshes all them goals in. Well, we I, really, I, really do. Yeah, I think that's where again you look at maybe. I mean, like can I say something though? If you think of, of, of him not being, you know, we could maybe get better. You could. It's easier to talk about the players who are at a level where it would be hard, hard to replace them. So Van de Ven has mm. come through. I think you'd, we'd all admit yeah. this bloke looks world class at the moment. Yeah. Romero yeah. is a World Cup winner. You know. Yeah. Um, you know. So they, those, those two. Porro. I couldn't imagine managing to get a better right back than him at the moment. Uh, same, same as the doggy. Uh, doggy. Same, yeah. Yeah. Same, same as Johnson, Ricario. You, you could yeah. argue. You could maybe get a better right winger than Johnson. Possibly, you know, I wouldn't. But that, if you use that argument with Werner, really, you could use it with Johnson, you know. And then, because what it comes down to is, a, you know, do you happen to fancy a player or not? You know, uh, you know, do you happen to rate them or have a gut feeling? And my, yep. It's a gut feeling as much about Werner. He's good. I, I have that with Johnson. But if you're yep. going to argue Johnson, could we could do better? You could argue we could do better with Ricardison, even though he's Brazil's number nine, and I, I rate him as well. Um, Johnson, you could say that with. Saar, you could pretend he's done very well, Saar. Like Saar, yeah. But, I think... but, but maybe, yeah. but maybe you could argue that somebody like the, a Gallagher could 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 be a, a marginally better. I probably be, wouldn't argue that. I like Saar. Basuma, at the moment, you could do better than. You know what I'm saying? So if we, yeah, we, we yeah. keep that ruthless, you yeah. say all this, you know. Yeah. It's you know again. I mean, Johnson Angelo after the game, and he said it in pretty much today that he's been super on the weekend. Look, he's another one who's still very young, developing, moved to a big club, and has big expectations. And you have to pay a big fee for the most part. He's handled it really, really well. He started the two games before he came off the bench. He did really well against Villa. He wasn't great against Fulham, but most of the team weren't great against Fulham. This time he came again off the bench and he made a real good impact. I do just want to bring on to Son for a second because he was asked about the weight of that captaincy. On his shoulders. And to be fair, do you know what, Marlon? Son has become that player that really, you know, almost to some degree, how we relied on Kane for a lot of in crucial goals. Son has already kind of become that player. You know, 15 goals, eight assists. And I think, you know what, again, Sonny has been that player that, as I keep on saying, we've had to, he's had to really step up when needed. And again, when you consider the guy's been away, you know, really 
through, you know, throughout the season, really, both in terms of obviously internationals and, of course, as well, the fact that he's had a couple of uh, part injuries in between. But, um, you know, are we very lucky, Marlon, that we've got Sonny in the form that he has been in this season? Because when you consider you go back 12 months or so, many were actually considering the fact Son had been done. And mm -hmm. I think we all had that feeling with Son. You know, again, when you look at his trajectory at Spurs and his consistency in front of goal, Son's always been a player that can get you 15, 20 goals a season. I know, again, the previous was a bit of an off-season. Um, but, you know, he's now 14 goals behind Martin Chivers with Bobby Smith, Jimmy Greaves and Harry Kane all in the 200s. And that winning strike took him to 160 goals at the weekend. Just how pivotal is Son becoming for this team? Not just as a player, but also as a leader that is getting us so many crucial goals this season, Miles. No, Sonny, like for me, I can't I can't even say a bad word about him. I love him so much, right? Everything he's done this season, he's taken a lot on, right? With Harry Kane leaving, right? He's had to take the captaincy on, right? Um, and he's been brilliant. And I, it will not when he was at left wing, right? He last season he said under Conte, Conte didn't play. It was really weird because the season before when Conte came in, he, he was on fire, he was great. But last season, Conte made him play really differently. So a lot of Spurs fans started to get on his back. And you could see that he was playing slightly different to what he was the year before. And that's why the goals dried up. But this season, and put him in the middle. In fact, you know what? Thank God Richardson had a bad start to the season. Otherwise, I wouldn't have seen it. But Point. it's kind of, he's gone in that middle. And he has been fantastic. The numbers he is pulling up, you wouldn't, like, you'd sit there and go, really? Sonny? pulling up these numbers from central striker. These are nearly, nearly as good as Harry Kane numbers, right? But, you know, you can't... He's taken on the captaincy as well. I just, like, I can't say anything bad about him. The only thing that worries me now, right, and this is the biggest thing that worries me, is his age, right? And he plays a lot of international football, right? And yep. as they say, when you start getting into your late, into your 30s, it starts catching up with you. Now, a lot of people are saying about Werner being his understudy. Uh-uh. We need Sonny, we need Sonny next year to be where we can use him in different positions as a left winger, as a striker, and be able to move him about and have yep. free quality up top, right? So where Sonny can be rested, right? Because when he goes to South Korea and he has a long trip, he comes back that first weekend, but he doesn't have to start. He ain't thrown in at the deep end and he's struggling for 90 minutes. And this is the problem. You, you start like we've seen it since he's come back from the Asian Cup, right? He's struggled with form. It's been up and down like a yo-yo, right? But that's where Werner hasn't stepped up for me. <laughs> Again, this is why I take it back to Werner. He hasn't stepped up. Nor Richarlison stepped up for that period he was away, right? But then got injured. <laughs> so Sonny's had to play again. So, and this is this is the issue that we're going to have is that if we don't start getting the replacements in now, we'll do what we did to Harry Kane and it'll be too too late and it will be just be, we'll be back. Can, I, can I just come in now? I yeah. totally agree with Marlon. This is why I felt last week he plays in Korea goes all the way, scores a goal or two, didn't he? Comes yes. back, really puts a shift in for us. Yes. And he is getting old now, getting older. He's got to be worked. By the way, that Dan Jones just got an amazing goal at the Leeds, killed the game, like, by the way. What's a goal? You know, I mean, keep her out of position. But anyway, just for, for Leeds a long way Leeds out, fans on the, on the commute. Made it look easy. But anyway, um, this is why I would personally would look to start with Carlison tomorrow. So you yeah. start to keep jump. You start to cast the jump. You start to keep Son fresh. You got to start to really work. And he won't like it because he loves playing. But you got to really start. To, start John, to would you not be terrified? Would you not be terrified going to going to West Ham away and Sonny not on the Sonny not on the team? Oh mate, you got you got Ricarlison. I, I like him. You know, he's Brazil's number nine. He's no mug. Yeah, and then you bring Sonny yeah. on. because the other thing we're all singing Johnson's praises quite rightly. But mm. I don't be surprised. I'll be the first tomorrow if we're getting smashed and he's out on the right and he's not going past his man and he's not doing anything. And I'll get Decky on, you know. Oh, at, least oh, 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 at least he can hold the ball up. <laughs> we need an out ball. You know, something it'll all change. But you can't, you, Sonny can't play every game because he's, you know, I, be, game, be... it relies on pace. You've got, to, yeah, you've got yeah. to be nursed and got to start to be treated a bit differently now. You know, as we go into this next season, because I think oh, he's so. 30, 30, 31 now, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He is. But I, John, I, I, I do agree on that point, John. You say there, but you know, Mark, could you imagine if Sonny's not in that lineup, Miles, for West Ham? The murders wouldn't they? I mean, again, for many, you said, it, John, for you at the start of the show, John, you said it's the ultimately one of the biggest games of your season, and it is ultimately, you know, a bit. I think in the context of this game for Tottenham West Ham, 
I think you look at Spurs' you know, remaining games. I think we've obviously we can show them here to our watching audience the remaining games Spurs have got left. Um, they've got some really, really tough, tough games to come. We'll try and get you that graphic, but there are there are some really, really tough, tough games to come for Tottenham. You know, after West Ham, we've got Forest, we've got Newcastle, we've got Arsenal, we've got Liverpool. Um, and you know, there is that element of concern that you know if Thornley was resting this one. I mean, what would the reaction be, Miles? Has, has well, he got they, a they, okay. Well, Go no. I mean, I'm, I, no one else. Bit, I'm sure he'll start tomorrow. I'm, yeah. I would. I would think it would go through Angie's mind at the possibility to rest him because right. you want him burnt out in these games and then injured or not quite off on the pace when we play the real top teams when we really need yeah, him. That's, that's a exactly fair. What that, I'd say. That's you know. Not- I think you're right on that, John. I think the only thing I would say, I mean, I would be in your favour. I think what I would say is with Forrest on the, which is now the Sunday, I think maybe that's where you start, Richie. With no disrespect to Forrest, I think West Ham, I think, will pose a lot more of a threat. And I think the point you make there, John, is really good. Can Son handle now that almost turnaround? Because he has come from career, like you say. Can yeah. he play twice in a week? Very quick succession. Because I'm sure the sports be... science people will be thinking, you know, they, they measure all the, you know, the strain they're put under. Yeah. This yep. is when you're suddenly at risk of, 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 of a muscle strain of some kind. And you just want to maybe ease off a little bit. It's just a yep. point. Uh, what do I know? It's the sports science people that would know, you know, they they, they do all the tests, they'll, they'll know far better. But yep. surely at that age, you've got to start to think about that, mm. you know? It was a tough game on Saturday. Yeah. It wasn't for him as well. It was a challenge. I mean, and, Miles... and he's the geezer that picks it up. And I'm, by the way, no one else said this, but I'm like, I said to the geezer next to me, look, it's only two minutes, couple of minutes to go and our number nine's lying down in our penalty area as Sonny runs out with a ball, by the way. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, so when the ball comes in, nobody else said this. Where's Where's Ricky? R- Ricky's back in, in our penalty area, sulking or whatever. So because of Sonny, we so got... I, 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 I was so, sulking, I'll tell you, I'm, not, I was sulking. Don't get me, I'm just thinking of how, you know, like a general, you have to use your resources yeah. through yeah. The, in the war, you know. Yeah. Uh, listen, Miles, two questions for you on that one. Number one, will Sonny start against West Ham for you? And number two, how important yeah. is it this summer they do go out and find that understudy to Sonny? No, he'll start tomorrow. Like like you said, like we haven't got anyone to replace him, so he has to start tomorrow. There's no one good enough in that front three as well. And if Kulu's off, or if Kulu's even playing, he needs Sonny as well. But uh, as in this summer, need need that replacement, needs to be in there this summer. Uh, we can't do what we've done with Kane. Um, just can't happen. We've, le- we've been burnt once, don't burn us again. <laughs> I think it's obviously fair. And I think, again, the look at, you look at how big the game is in the context of the season for Tottenham, the West Ham game. I'm sorry to keep saying this. You know, I, I do feel that, you know, this is one of those games where I think you have to go as strong as possible, which is hard because back to what John said there, you're looking at the situation where you've had that quick turnaround. And I think the intensity of this game, I think West Ham is going to be an absolute full house. There will be 60,000 packed, despite the fact of the real difference of opinion with West Ham fans. You know, we think we've got different opinions as Spurs fans. You know, you've got a lot of the fan base there that are really calling for David Moyes' head. There's some that want to see a more attacking brand of football. There's some that are quite happy with what they're doing. I mean, again, I think a lot of it is knowing your history, but at the same time, I think as a club evolves and they bring in certain players of a certain clientele and the way they perform, that also with that fact as well, you have to bring into account that the element is for West Ham, that they're seeing some real genuine, decent players join the club from an attacking perspective and they want to see the best of them. And um, that brings me on nicely to it, because what we are going to do, we are going to go for our final break of the show for our listeners on audio. Uh, take you to that break, you are going to hear from the West Ham way that give you a preview of West Ham to come. And Chris, I'm going to open up with you if I can for West Ham, because, you know, we've mentioned it a number of times on this show, how big it is in the context of the season. John has spoken about it at the very start of the show, just how big the West Ham game is for him. How big is it for you in the context of the season? How important is it that we go to West Ham with the desire, the ambition to win it. Because quite arguably at the moment, I think any other than a win now looks really damaging to what Spurs' hopes are for a top four finish. Uh, yeah, we need to beat them tomorrow, especially after the loss that we got from them at home. Um, I just It also keeps them quiet because they obviously absolutely love a West Ham Tottenham game. The West Ham fans, it's like their cup final, of course. Um, so I... This whole thing with Sonny, by the way, I actually would start Richie and Sonny tomorrow. Um, I'd get Sonny on the left and maybe get Richie on the mi- in the middle. Um, 
I, I think we need to go out in force because we saw what they did to us from, you know, previously when we lost and they're going to do exactly the same. They're going to go full strength tomorrow, 100%. And we should be doing exactly the same then. Um, you know, they're, they're not going to want to lose, especially for them up being at home. They're not going to want to lose this game. So I, those three points, every three point now is so crucial. And I, as much as I like, I think John, what he said, it, it's a good point. You know, you, you've got, we rely on Son a hell of a lot. He's been through so much this season, you know, a lot with, um, you know, going out um, with for the Asian Cup, you know, whatever. We've relied on him and God knows how much his body has gone through, you know, this whole season. But this is why we need strong backup. And that is what needs to happen now. Um, and yeah, I, I'm I'm same age as Sonny now. I know exactly what it is. You know, your body starts to go a little Wait bit downhill. Wait till you're 65, Christina. Wait till you're 65. <laughs> I, I've now, it's one thing. On six occasions in the last couple of months, younger people have given up their seats to me on the tube. I do have it up a bit. I limp a bit when I'm going looking a bit sorry. And they've given up their seat for me on the tube, which I really like as a result. Oh, so I was going to say, is that a good, good thing that they do that? You don't take care of Oh, I'm, no, I'm well happy. Because actually, I have it, I mean, Mrs. I have it both ways. I go and work out and I'm pretty strong and all that. But when I want to see, I limp on and I hunch up a bit and just, you know, do that just to get a bit of sympathy. And I get the seats, yeah. I don't know whether they see you. I don't know whether they give you that seat because they see the way you leg it from the stadium. I tell you. Oh, oh no, I know I have it every way. Uh, when it suits me, I'm a very strong, fit 65. And when it suits me, I'm old now. I'm 65. You, that's unfair. What you're doing, and I'll curl up <laughs> on myself a bit. Either way, you get the result you want. I'm a I love that. I'm a narcissist. I'll tell you <laughs> Miles, I want to bring you in um, just in relation to what I just said around the top four. Like, I started that segment there talking about the top four. And I know Andrew's got this real thing about the fact around top four. He doesn't like the element of it being around Spurs going for a top four finish. It's about improvement. There was a great little quote that came out of his presser where a journalist asked him, there's an eight point gap between you and United. Can you see them challenging you for a top four spot? He said, I don't know. Can you see us challenging Manchester City? Well, they're only eight points, you know, ahead of us. So he didn't really like the fact of being questioned around the top four. He's made it very, very clear that for him, it's about seeing the progression of the team and almost the growth rather than the finishing place. I mean, I'd like to ask you, is is it everything to you about the top four this season? Is it more again about seeing the growth? I mean, does it change the narrative if Spurs do or don't finish in the top four for you? No, no, no. To be fair, look, I had Spurs finishing eighth this year. Right, as soon as Harry Kane was sold, I had eighth, right? And has outbound all my expectations, right? So the fact we're sitting here even talking about top four, I didn't even think we'd be having this conversation. I thought we'd be yeah. sitting there just yeah. making up the season. There'd be we'd still be getting used to the Ange system. The players will still be there'd be games like the Brighton's away and the but I thought we'd have a lot more of those, right? The fact we've had a lot less is just a remarkable the work he's done. So for me, it's a case of if we make it, we make it. If we don't, I'm not going to be sitting there angry, right? At the end of the day, it's actually been a better season than I expected. Right? Yeah, I'm going to be I'm like the Fulham game. I'm going to be sitting there criticising everything that everybody did. But at the end of the day, I'm going to look at the when we play Sheffield United on that last day of the season, I'll probably reflect on this season and go, actually, it's been quite enjoyable, right? You know, the, man, the, Etihad, the Etihad game, the, the Emirates away, right? Who thought we could go there and probably be like one of the best teams on the pitch? Yeah, I've, obviously I've been frustrated when we played Luton at home or, you know, when we lost the Wolves. But the whole season as a whole has been fantastic. And I think mm -hmm. Andrew's just saying that because he knows that a lot of us fans, there'd be like an element of our fans will be going, well, top four doesn't really achieve nothing for Spurs. It hasn't done in the past. It's literally been, we played Champions League football and we have, we've never actually pushed on. Even in the champ when we got to the Champions League final year, you'd expect Spurs to push on, and actually, it was the complete opposite, right? So, you know what? If Villa get it, they get it. If we don't, we don't. But I'm not one of them who's hoping that West Ham and Arsenal could beat Bayern Munich and Leverkusen. I'm I want Leverkusen and Bayern Munich literally knocking them out. I don't care about if it's fifth, <laughs> right? Yeah. Can't, it's yeah. not about that. All I yeah. want to see is we we finish the season strong, and yeah. then next season we go go again. And it's very key what happens this summer. So, and if, do I want to see Champions League football next year? I'm not going to sit there and say, no, if you give it to me, I'm going to take it. But yep. will I take Europa League football? Yes, I would, because I didn't expect it.
So that's mm. where I sit on that one. Yeah, I think it's fair points. I mean, uh, you look at obviously this game in terms of a standalone. Now, West Ham were thrown up against Newcastle United you know, in the early stages of that second half period. But they then considered three times in the final 13 minutes to lose 4 3. They're now on a winless run of three in the Premier League, picking up two points on their last available nine, which has left them seventh in the table. They're one point ahead of eighth place Newcastle, four behind sixth place Man United, who have a game in hand. You know, at one point, John, come over to you, it actually looked like they were going to be maybe one of the challengers, dare I say, for maybe the top four. They had such a strong start to the league, and that's seemingly deteriorated with, again, that frustration that's falling over from the fans, whoever they want David Moyes in whether they want David Moyes out. Does that result with a weekend of 4-3, John? Does that benefit us or are we facing a bit of a wounded animal in West Ham? I'd, I'd rather them lost, really. Um, I think they, they're going to want to wanna bounce back from that. But yep. uh, if they'd won it, their tells would have been up. And, of course, they would have been fancy, you know, a, a, a pegging us back, you know. So because if they'd won that and then beat us, and they're probably six points behind us at that point, you know, that's doable. So... No, I'm glad they lost, um, and because if they if they're one of them clubs, if they get ahead of steam up, you know they could have still clinched top five and got Champions League football and maybe displaced us. We all know we can choke. We've seen yep. Tottenham choke ten point leads in the past and all that. We know it happens. So you know, but uh, all this stuff with Champions League, what you you know, he's obviously Ange. There's there's it, there's a bit of still in him. He, he, he likes to manage expectations. He likes to manage um, the, the the conversation around Tottenham and lack of silverware and all that. So yep. he's quite withering, isn't it, with the way he treats the... Uh, it, you, you, you've got to be... It's a bit like Brian Clough. You were a bit nervous. One of the managers, you're a bit nervous when you ask him a question because you're going to get a withering look. Little bit oh, he, can, he, can, he can embarrass you, can't he? He's not afraid to embarrass you. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You know, he's gonna yeah. Be, you know, you're gonna be you've got to be a bit careful. When he, some of the questions are quite reasonable, then what journalists <laughs> hate to ask, you know what I mean? You can't blame them for it. But he's obviously no, he's not gonna have any of it because he just sees it as unnecessary pressure and unnecessary um conversation, really, you know. Yep. So, yep. so that's what it's all about. I mean, this season, I must admit. Um, last season, it was one that you sit there and you kind of find yourself looking up at the sky. And you know, I've had this at times with Tottenham over the years where you start thinking, maybe I don't like football anymore, you know, maybe I don't, you know, and it's it's actually just because it's shit at that point, is why you're looking. So, you're looking at there's times I remember we played under the George Graham era, we played Coventry away, and we won one nil. Chris Armstrong scored, and it, I was looking for seagulls. For, I was thinking, seagulls were inland. I'm thinking, why are so many seagulls? I wonder if there's going to be a storm. They say, when, and this is when the football games go, and we won 1 0, but we were terrible. We Man were of the Raid Coast, do Army, Johnny. And Man of the Raid Coast, do Army. When earlier this season, Ricky, I've mm. been on the edge of my seat. You actually can't take your eyes yeah, off. You can't, you can't. Yep. Game. So it's yep. been great. And I didn't particularly enjoy the last few games, by and large. I didn't really enjoy the looting game, but you are, you know, I forgot the old person's protest on 65 Minutes, actually. Completely forgot it because I was just so taken with the game, you know, even though it wasn't particularly enjoyable. It was, we, you know, we were attacking and all that stuff. So, you know, so I don't know. Jury's out, but, you know, Champions League football. I've just got a feeling with this guy, I'd be surprised if we if we did get Champions League football next year. I'd be surprised if we'd progress too far in it, to be honest, somehow. Um, I just suspect that with this breed of football, when you meet the top, the real canny teams in Europe, they'll probably give you a spanking, just the way Arsenal, you know, were, 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 were you know, in the Europa at times when they met the top teams the last few years would get would get beat, you know, um, yeah. because because they just they'd been out of Europe for so long and this that and the yeah. other. So so. You know, it'd be nice to get it for the prestige of it, but I wouldn't expect us to to have a particularly great run in it. I mm. suspect if this if we if the, this guy sticks with us and we stick with him, that it, it would be the league is where we, domestically was where it would happen before it would happen with Europe is what yeah. I would expect. And I think the league is the thing he's most interested in. You know, so you know, and you can't you know so far we're making progress. At times, I'm concerned, as as we all were with the Fulham game, the Brighton game, where you're just so wide open. You know, you've got wide open spaces.
but just the same as it was with Conte. We could just play like a hot knife going through butter, you know, outnumbered in midfield, big wide spaces in the channels behind our full backs or the wing backs as it was under Conte. You know, it's, it's just a horrible watch. And, you know, that bothers me. You saw Arsenal yesterday, um, you know, and they're playing some very good attacking football this year. But yesterday up against That's horrendous. City, That's horrendous that game. Yeah, it well, was horrendous. it was a shit game, but they, yeah. but they were compact and they didn't get there. Yeah. But and, they, and City did, apart yeah. from that hack, I mean, I, I, I didn't watch the very end. Yet again, I went out with the missus. When I see that Van Gogh immersive thing, which was all right, yeah. you know. Okay, yeah, yeah, and and and, I, and it was a result. <laughs> Don't you mind me? I said, oh, I fucking Arsenal I them anyway. I'm at this thing. So it's I'm time doing this, so, you know. Oh, the same, but you're. I, I absolutely you know. despise them. Every time I put them on, they always score. So I thought, oh, I, I, I watch. I, 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 yeah, well, that's it. I mean, I've just. I'm happy if they're just out of my life. I know, yeah. I know. I've I told know. you for years. I used to take my take my mates with them, will you? Hey, yeah. Well, well, we used to talk about architecture with people over the years and talk about yeah. Art Deco. I know, so I fucking hate Art Deco. Something about it. And it took me ages to realise because the old hybrid was Art Deco. So there they spoiled yeah. Art Deco for me, you know. No, they're just a really horrible. I've never liked them. They were a team of fat, pu of fat publicans, basically. Miserable fat publicans, uh, you know, from Isn't and sort of thing. Big, you know, uh, you know, kind of grumpy sort of fuckers somehow. You know, I knew a few Arsenal fans. I was in a band with a couple, you know, a little bit miserable. Um, never really liked them. And then, of course, they like to see themselves as sophisticated. And they, they somehow become the team of liter North London literary agents. So they're very middle class. A lot of toffs like them. There was always a bit of an Etonian sort of connection. Now, I, I'm a thoroughly dislikable club. There's no doubt about it. But credit works, Stu. They defended well yesterday, very compact. And it's like a boxer. Surely a good boxer can can you know can can weather the storm at times you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Uh, yeah. That, having said that at times our defending's been pretty good i'm tempting fate here for tomorrow i know against the team who are good on set pieces so i'm really tempting fate but we've we've defended set pieces reasonably well for the most part there's a few soft goals let in but for the most part yeah. you know, we've defended well in that first part of the season our defense defensive play was very good against villa Defensively, we didn't really give them a sniff, you know, to be fair. So, you yeah. know, tomorrow will be a real test, I think. You say it there, John, about set pieces. I think, you know, Suchek is one of those players where he is really dominant from a set piece. And I think with Vicario, these are the kind of games that I do. And listen, Vicario's been great for most of the season, but we saw that little bit of a period, Chris, where against City, Everton is put under pressure. I would expect, you know, Moyes will be looking at those areas of where they can get those gains, and one will be set pieces, and whether again, Sue checks in and around the goalkeeper. And whilst I've got some really decent flair players, West Ham, I think the one thing West Ham have always done against Spurs is when they've got results, they've seemed to bully us on the day. And that's where maybe, you know, you'd hope that because they have had a bit of changeover in the team and there's a few more flair, flair players there, that won't happen as much. And do you think in a weird way, Chris, because there is that almost at the moment with West Ham, that indifference of opinion with the manager, can that maybe help us or does that might galvanise them? Because I think for David Moyes, if he's looking to stay there at the club, it will look at Tottenham at home being one of those games where if they win that, that does get a lot of fans on side. It's the biggest game, let's be honest, of their season. Does that play a factor in your mind or not really? I spoke to a lot of West Ham fans on their opinion and they're all, they want him out. I, I right. It kind of surprises me, to be fair, because I, I think he's done a great job for them, you know, like you said, it's given them a trophy. It's just, yep. you know, it. What, what else can you ask for? I guess I don't know, but um, I just with West Ham though, when they get their chances, they take them. When it comes to Tottenham, mm, like they're quite they, clinical. They, aren't they? they are quite clinical or, against that well, against us. I I, I can speak for against 100%. us, right? They are quite clinical. Yeah, they, 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 you can tell when they play us. They want to win it. The, the players mm. and yep. that is what frightens me with this whole. If we're playing bad in the first half. And then we, you know, somehow change it in the second. That sort of play sort of worries me because I just don't want West Ham to take that first half as, you know, that they will just all go in and, you know, make their chances. And we're just sitting there like, I don't know, you know. I, it That's why this whole build-up with it with from Saturday is worrying me for tomorrow's game. Um, I, oh. I, I just don't want them to beat us both home and away. Oh, that's that's the other thing us. as well. It, yeah. it would just yeah. drive me insane. Um, but yeah, I, I just... 
we we yeah we really need to go out there in full force 100 percent I, I, like i said stick richie in the middle and put sunny in the left i i really think that could really improve um you know us getting goals in yeah. i just with with verna i think he could be a great sub substitution for tomorrow i, I just want to see a lot of goals because and it's not even that it, it's just i want a comfortable win as well yeah. it's been it's felt a while since i've sat down and thought oh that was like i i don't have to be so intense <laughs> I, you know it, i just this whole season has been such a roller coaster though and you can just see that the build up is coming it is 100% coming but fans need to just be patient as well because i think we've taken so much criticism to some players a lot of the time but like what do you expect it's not going to happen overnight guys like it, it really there's been a lot that's gone on you know the whole injury crisis the whole of some of our players coming in and out you know to, to pay for their country you know it, it's it all of it is is going to take and it's going to have an impact on on our play um it's just we we can't be so judgmental um as Tottenham fans I mean realistically we can't you know yeah we, I get that I, I, I hear what you're saying, no, I hear what you're saying because I think the element is though. I think because again, and it, it, I don't think going back to it because we had that unbelievable start to the season where we had those kind of eight or nine games, John. And I'll, and I'll let you come in here, John, as well. That the fact is because we had that period. I think many were thinking, okay, Chelsea obviously wobbled us when we had that Wolves defeat, and as we know, we had that period where again we had the West Ham defeat, the Villa defeats, and we thought, you know what? We obviously had that injury crisis. We got all the players back, and I think there was a feeling that you know when Spurs have got all their players back. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with. And I think, again, you've had a good point there, Chris. You know, Madison had quite a lengthy injury. Bentacle was out of an ACL. You know, and he said himself, Bentacle, you know, he's still playing injured as well. You know, it does take time to recover. But I think what we're hoping now to see, I think this is a really, really crucial week in the season for Tottenham. They've got West Ham to come. They've got Forest to come. You know, Spurs going in both of those games, those six points put them in a really, really good place to be, you know, in contention to really finish the season strong. And we know we've got those tough games on the horizon, but we've shown in the start of the season, we can navigate those. And I think, again, Spurs have a massive say, not only in, of course, uh, who finishes in the Champions League, but actually who wins the title. And I think the key is, John, now I, I look at games like this one for me, and I just wonder, you know, these are games that I think not should define managers, but West Ham away is always a big, big game for a manager. Pochettino in his opening game as Spurs boss won away there, and he immediately got the fans on side from day one. We know we love Ange. Everyone loves Ange. I get that. But there's games like this West Ham away where, not saying you're expected to win as a Spurs manager, but it's good money and credit in the bank to win these kind of games, John. Do you know what I mean? Do you agree? Absolutely. And we've got a good record there. I mean, when's the last time they've done the double over us? Well, it's, it's been a while since they've done the double, but, you know, we have to go yeah, back. The, the, la we... the last really terrible game is when they had that, the geezer mm. from Man United. The, the great talent who wasted his he wasted it all. Do you remember? He's a really good talent, great player. Ravel Morrison. Ravel yeah, Morrison. That's it. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. a player. And he 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 played fantastic against us. Yeah. They beat us 3 0 at White Hart Lane. And before the game, you had Noble got them all together. You could see they knew what it was about. Yeah. They played yeah, against yeah. he'd played against Tottenham since, you know, youth games and knew what it was about. And I looked at the Tottenham players. And they just looked a little bit sort of underprepared. And, and of course, they were slow out the traps. And Christine, yeah. Christine was saying there, obviously, you need patience. But it's one of the frustrations. I've been a Tottenham fan, obviously, for many years. I've seen us get beat in FA Cup games by lesser teams. So often, we've been beaten because the other team wanted it more. Simple as I that. This is where one of these and, games and, have gone back to that is, point. Is, is, is we, is, can't, is, we can't get beaten tomorrow, John, on the lack of effort or that. I mean, no, well, there's a we can't have a crack. In yeah. our DNA, and you saw that there against Fulham. Mm. You saw it there against Fulham. Yeah. That was, yep. That's Tottenham's DNA. This, yep. you know, a certain weakness, a certain lack of character where you can't even grind out a result, where there's a lack of leadership on the pitch, yep. by the way. This is one of the reasons I'm always happy to see Holberg come, come off the pitch, you know. Yeah, hobby. I don't know. Chris didn't have to tell me the proper way to pronounce. I still don't know. But to me, it'd always be Oldberg. I'll tell you what, you're lucky, mate. The easy one. At least in the summer, we'll be gone. We haven't got to worry about it anymore. The easy <laughs> one is PH. Well, yeah, that's right. But come, come, come at the end of May, June, you'd be in Italy, I suppose, a geezer. <laughs> but he's got something about him, yeah. you know? And you can see yeah. why he's not He's not going to be mobile enough yeah. for, for Ange Ball. 
obviously understand it, but yeah. I think a lot of Spurs fans are relieved when he comes on. You know, mm. that's a good point. Uh, Listen, I, I think back to that, John. I think it'll be quite, you know, I think important to bring on as a player tomorrow if we're winning the game because I think again, he does a player that you said they kind of shores things up. Let me ask you, John. Prediction? You seem really nervous about this one. I can tell you're not. Look, going I, there, I, full guns blazing. I, you know, that when we, when we used to win cups, I bet against us literally every <laughs> round. Even when we were at home to Exeter one year, yeah, I bet against us. So I, I, I'm a hex better. So I'm, I'm going to say we're going to crumble and West Ham, oh, and West Ham will beat us three one. Yeah, Blimey. because the last time. Yeah, the la I bought into it with them for the Fulham game and stupidly, stupidly predicted we'd win 3 1. And we were mm. humbled 3 0. Lucky for it to end at 3 0 that night. You know, first game we didn't score this season. So I'm going to go with 3 1 for West Ham that will crumble as usual. And very much hoping we, we I'm sorry, but I'm a hex better. You know, I've been programmed to be like this. But, but basically, with the, all these players coming back from injury, you know, we get through the Easter period. If we do get a result tomorrow, and I don't think we will, but if we did, people like Bentecu are going to come good, you know, maybe Bissouma. So, but before the end of the season, we, we, we're well for, set for a good running, you yeah. know. And and one thing I'll say this as well, just to balance up the argument, we've got to play all the, the, them top three. They won't be relishing playing us. Any no, that's of them. true. They won't be relishing yeah. any of them, you know, at yeah. all. You know, because you're against these top teams, funny enough. You know, it's we all know the problem with Tottenham. Teams who like West Ham will sit deep and bring us on. Yeah, bring us on and hit us on the break and set pieces. So they'll be trying to bully Vicario. So basically, you know, um, tomorrow, you know, you'd like to think, and you'd be OK. What are you made of? They're going to bully they, you. They, yeah, get, are, you gonna, gonna, are you going to yeah. get bullied? And I yeah, think players yeah. should go out there with a thing. No, I'm not going to get bullied. I'm going to put me nut enough. I've got at these corners. <laughs> you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm wearing the fucking cockerel. I'm wearing the fucking cockerel and I'll die for this fucking club. And that's why, I, as a fan, and I know it's all very emotive and I'm a mug punter. I, I get that. But you should, you know, I can't get why these players. You can't just think, no, I'm not having West Ham turn us over and say to the other players, you know, I'm going to come with, I'm going to give you a smack in a minute unless you wake up. Wake yeah. up. You know, I tell them what I, I, I can tell you what saying, John. Yeah, they'll be, they'll they're be... going to be like that. That's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. You know, I don't... And if, we, if we had that in a club, I'd mm. be optimistic. Hopefully, Ange can start to get that spirit yeah. there. I'm sorry, yeah. you know. And I know I'm, it's silly talk and all that, it's, but it's football fans. All football fans get yeah. this. Pride in your club, you know. That's you, got what, cockerel, you got the cockerel on your chest. Yeah, you know. But you know, you made that you point know. there, John. I've got to bring Miles in on that point because Miles, I think there'll be back to what John says there. There'll be very few that are forgiving, as they were maybe against Fulham, if the attitude isn't right tomorrow. Because it's West Ham. It is a big, big game for many, as John has alluded to. There, it's a big, big game in the season. How important is it, Miles? The attitude is right. We approach that game in the correct manner because you know I think that is really, really, you know, very much true to the point that. This is not a game that can suffer attitude, right? No, no. And like, you know what? To be fair, even when we played the friendly in the summer, Ange's first game, yeah. and when we played yeah. them at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, they like we came after that game that the one, especially at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, we didn't say they didn't put the effort in. We didn't. Mm. We never come out of that. It was just we all thought Spurs should have won that game, right? So it's just one of them. But I'm sorry, but tomorrow's game. Is going to have to be one of them nervous ones for us, right? And and the reason why I'm saying that is, we'll probably have to go one nil down because the reason why I'm saying that is because Moyes will then play into our hands and he'll go very Total defensive, defense, at wrong, defensive, yeah, defensive yeah. at the wrong time, and yeah. that means that we'd be able to bring the Johnsons on and whoever else is on the bench and change the game back in our favor. And it's the yeah. one game where I'm I'm kind of going if we do go one nil down, I'm not going to be nervous, like a mm. bit like how Luton was, and I think that's the way. The plan has to be because I think if we go out there, all guns blazing in the first and try and do what we tried to do earlier, it'll be very similar to how it was back in November, yeah. right? So, but for me, all Spurs have to do tomorrow, right? One thing that they have to do, apart from the corners, they have to stop the Keta. 
stop Paqueta, it stops yep. Kudos, it stops Bowen, and it stops Antonio, right? Yep. And you, you saw that at the weekend, especially when they tried to go a bit more defensive. It just wasn't stopping Paqueta, and he's mm. very, very important to all this Moyes system and yep. how it works. So if Spurs can do that tomorrow, we'll be successful. But I'm gonna I'm going for a one all draw, and I think we'll go one nil down. But I think we'll score in the last ten minutes. Okay, one one. I mean, I, I was gonna edge it for a two one Spurs win, but I, I do get the concern going into this one. You know, I think it's one of these games where for Ange, I think it would be a massive, massive. I think you know, I think it would be a really important you know result of the season to go to West Ham and win. And despite the fact of what they're going through there um, with the talent they've got, I think it would be an, a good win there. I think you've got to pick, uh, look at the fact as well. West Ham they picked up. 24 points from their 15 league matches this season. They've only suffered three defeats at home. We know we saw that horrendous one they took to Arsenal, um, obviously only a few weeks ago. I mean, that's the thing, one thing I will say about Spurs. If they go a couple of goals up early, which I know with Spurs, we haven't really seen that mood that would get fairly toxic early on. And I think, you know, back to what Marlon says there, you know, if we go and equalise there and that would again change that mood, uh, that would be very, very key. Chris, let me come around to you. We know uh, Alvarez remains suspended for West Ham. There are not like many changes. They're all expected to be about their number one goalkeeper, Alfonso Aurelia, which means Lucas Fabianski is set to start. Nayef Urgard should be fit after missing out of the weekend. Thoughts on this one for you, Chris? Give me your prediction, if you so dare. Oh, man, I hate this part of the bloody show. Um, yeah, do you know who scares me? is Bowen. I think he's been phenomenal. Um, he's a wonderful player, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. He's absolutely phenomenal. Um, he scares me for tomorrow. On um oh I, I in my head I feel like it's gonna be a loss, but I don't want to say it out loud. What makes you what makes you think I, that? What makes you in terms of what our inconsistency? I, I just think we're gonna crumble. I just think that I I generally think West Ham are just gonna take all the chances that they've got and they will go for it, and then we'll mm. just be like done. We, 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 we won't react to it, basically. But it's a it's, tough game to call this one. It is tough to call. I, it, just like John said, I want us to go in playing with that attitude. John, you yeah. should be going in the changing rooms, especially at half-time, honestly. No, they put, put, put me in a changing room half-time and they'll never get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm going to get out for the second. I'm going to get out for the second half. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, you know, it's, it, there's been the odd player there over the years you felt was like that. I mean, Graham Roberts, obviously, had that in him. You know, he had the, Alan Mullery had that in him. <laughs> You know, <laughs> modern football is it's I know it's a different game and they probably just think yeah, I was a silly old sod if I went in there, you know. But you just think, come on, you know, this is you should be absolutely wound up for it and absolutely. That's a massive that, that, it's know. so important now that message is transcended, John. That's so important now. Ange does get that message across how big it is for the fans of the game. I'm I'm sure that he must be acutely aware. It's one of those games where again, along with Arsenal, you it's one of the games. Not a bad proportion, but you still look at it on the calendar as to when you're playing West Ham because it's a London it's derby. It's a London derby, yeah. Yeah, it's a London derby. Yeah. London derby. It's yeah. again the same in there with Chelsea. If you, can't, if you can't feel emotion, I know football people want to take the emotion out of it and, and they yeah. have to at times, but it to, it's good to play with emotion. The best yeah. teams I've ever seen play with emotion. You yep. have that emotion, you have that pride, you have that absolute togetherness. It's us against the rest of the yeah. world. You know? And yeah. I can see the beginnings of that with this team. Vicario. Mm. Poro got that. Adogi. Adogi's yeah. got that. Yeah. Romero's got that. Van der Ven. Yeah. Van der Ven. So that's good. It's building from the back, you know, the spine and mm-hmm. team. Sonny's obviously got that, you know, he's yeah. got that Korean the Oriental thing, you know, where you just you don't hide, you take responsibility and all that stuff, you know. Yeah. I think Werner will have it, you know, I think he'll have that. I think the Germans yeah. do tend to have that, you know, that sort yeah. of professionalism, you know, in them. And uh you know, I even Basuma the... after the goal um, on Luton, his reaction to the goal, um, it was brilliant. He just went yeah. and got the ball and yeah. just slammed it in the net. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But that's what I, I felt like. That was what was lacking. You know, a lot of the time in that Luton game was that that there was just no no one taking no control of that game. Yeah, no, no. one taking control. I think it was like the kind of player Chrissy Hewton. It, it was out of Forest Gate. He's out the East End, and Chrissy Hewton. Yeah, he he understood that that kind of player. You know, mm. you, uh, sometimes it's the homegrown sort of lads. Do you know what I mean? Yep. That you do want in there, you know. Um, you know, so, so someone like Noble had that for West Ham. Not the not te- a good footballer, uh, mm. but not technically not not the best, but really knew what these London yep. derbies were all about. And so too often, 
as we've seen a couple of weeks ago, we go to Fulham. Come on, I know, I know Fulham are, are decent on their day. I go and I, I, I work with geezers. In, I run a community thing as well as do me tours. And the, and the main geezer, Anthony, he's a Fulham fan. So I go over there to see a few Fulham games every mm. season. I think. So I'm well aware of, of, of they can blow hot and cold. <laughs> and they they agree. Yeah. But we should, we 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 Tottenham. You shouldn't yeah. be getting beat three 0 yeah. away and lying down like that. You know, you know what's funny though, John? When, when you're going when you're going for to, to yeah. a Champions League, that was terrible. Yeah. You, you know, know what's funny? I look at I look at the weekend with Fulham. They were three one down at Sheffield United, and I thought. This is so Tottenham. We get smashed up there. For, we get smashed up there three 0 They're thrown up against Sheffield United. I know they came back the draw, but you thought well, these teams—they turn into world beaters when we play them, or we make yeah. them look like world beaters. But then when it's the opposite reversal of them playing a week after, you think, how have we lost to these teams at times? It's just yeah. so yeah. Spurs. It is so Spurs. Right, listen, guys, it's been a really great show. Can I just say thank you so much? Whatever a couple of thousand that have watched us live here over X, over YouTube, Insta, and Twitter. So again, thank you so much for all your incredible support for the show. Can I say, Miles? What a storming debut. Sorry it's taken so long, mate. We'll have you back with us very, very soon. Where can everybody, where, where can everybody find the Spurs Kings, Miles? Where can they find them? Look, yeah, Ash is really promoting it. And just we're, we're at Spurs Kings TV. Um, we have different shows during the week. Um, but yeah, it's a good crack. Like literally, any of you, we love it. Just come over. I'll just give us some support. But yeah, Spurs Kings love TV. It. But but Ricky, thanks for letting me come on today. It's been absolutely brilliant. Ja, oh my God, you've literally, my cheeks are like hurting. You've made me laugh so much. And Christine, oh, lovely, it's been a lovely meeting you. You've yeah. done well. And Christine, you both, <laughs> yeah. both really made good points tonight. Pleasure yeah. meeting, meeting you and oh, Christina. Yeah. Great to see you again. You yeah, didn't laugh as much. No yeah. fireworks. Uh, <laughs> no, no. John, I can listen to you for, like, literally for yeah. hours, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been thank you honestly it's been a great great show yeah, well, christina, again, yeah. christina it's been a pleasure to share. um it's great to meet you as well yeah thanks <laughs> i can't believe i'm the only one here that's got to try and predict the winner because i can't be going on this bloody <laughs> prediction about a win i will go for two one <laughs> i said two one it's going to be tight though. i think it will be really really tight chris thank you as always always a pleasure chris you'll be back with us very very soon Oh, very quick can, I, can I just say, I'm really happy about the late kickoff against Forrest. I know most people hate it, but oh, for me, it's a lovely <laughs> Sunday evening, dead time. What a nice time to have a game of football. Big Look Sunday dinner late, then see the football. Another story I know, but i just got to say I'm happy about that. <laughs> let's, hope we're, let's hope we're happy. Let's hope I'm completely wrong and we smash them, the oh, Amers. I was going to say something else. Let's hope we smash them tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we are past the watershed for those that are listening back on audio thinking, what has happened on this show for the, for the language barrier? But we, we were past the recording watershed. So, I'm we sorry. I, I, I can't help me with time. I get carried away. I, next time I come, I won't swear anymore. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, we both of us are lying. Come on. <laughs> oh, no, this, oh, no. Listen, mate. I'm fucking serious. No, I mean, I'm very serious. <laughs> very quickly, John, you've got a book out. Where can everybody find the book? Oh, it's... um. Called Dark Job Dark Luminosity Memoirs of a Geezer. It's all over Amazon and all that. You get it maybe online. There's probably Waterstones will have it online. All these kind of people or come to the shows. We're touring. We're I deep love in, that. We're deep in West Ham uh, country in Chel Chelmsford, and a few of the season ticket older relatives of West Ham and mine are coming. Looking forward to that. I hope. Um, and so you come there, buy it, meet me. I'm a very interesting person in the flesh. You know, I'm very polite. I don't swear. I'll shake your hand as I sign your book. I, so have I, you I come from? I say, have you come from far tonight for the show? <laughs> there, you know, yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's always a pleasure, John. Thank you. We'll be back with us soon. Listen, guys, thank you so much for your incredible support for the show. Let's hope it is going to be a happy outing, of course, for West Ham. We're back with you for instant reaction to the game. But from myself, on the brilliant mall over at Spurs King City, what a debut he's had. Obviously, amazing Christina Zanders and a superb John Wobble. We've been the last one on Spurs, guys. As always, keep safe, keep well, and as always, come on, you Spurs.